we gathered here this evening to celebrate. What we've come to celebrate is a passage for many of these young persons as they move from a moment of graduation from high school into an introduction and a new part in time in their life. May your blessing be upon each of them, their families, and the way in which you can guide and uphold them through the living of each of their days. In the spirit of Christ Jesus, we come indeed to celebrate and honor these young people. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me as superintendent of Kent City Schools to extend a message of welcome to all of you from the Board of Education, from faculty and staff and students. This commencement cer ceremony is certainly an important and an exciting event for these graduates and their families. And we're pleased that each of you were able to join us this evening. I suppose there are likely to be a, a wide variety of feelings this evening as each of the young people receives their diploma. I suspect that for some parents, it may be the first son or daughter to complete high school. For others, it may be the last member of the family to graduate. For some, it may be the culmination of a long and perhaps difficult effort to complete school. But whatever the specific situation may be, I hope that each of you feel a genuine sense of satisfaction and accomplishment in the graduation of your son or daughter, and that this weekend will provide a great deal of joy uh, for your entire family as they're gathered, gathered together for this occasion. Thank you very much. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Todd Thiel, who is president of the class of 86. Uh, graduating class of 1986, I would like to thank you for being here this evening to share in one of the most momentous events in our lives, our commencement exercise. As I pondered what sort of message to leave with you, I asked myself, what does the term graduate literally mean in our case? So I pulled out the trusty Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary and looked up the word. There, among the various definitions, I found one that appealed to my sense of the profound. Graduate, to pass from one stage of experience, proficiency, or prestige to a usually higher one. That definition describes rather well the academic journey of every graduating senior present up to this date. Cast your mind back to our first stage of experience, those carefree, innocent days of kindergartners learning to survive away from our parents and marveling at the intricacies of learning to write real words and numbers. From then on up, education was never a simple, 
we had to start adding and subtracting, squaring and graphing those numbers, and writing down our thoughts coherently. Soon we were actually changing classes and groaning about homework and quizzes. Finally, we made it to high school. In our extracurricular activities, we developed lasting bonds with some of our best friends. Some of us even found a friend and a teacher who inspired us to do great things. The years flew by, and suddenly we were seniors. Today we sit here during the finale of our career in the public school system, at least as students. Possibly we're more worried about whether we're going to slip or lose our mortarboards on the way up here to receive our all-important diplomas, and are thinking more about celebrating graduation afterwards. Yet now is an important time also to ponder the future, when all the cheers and the tears and the hugs and the mixed feelings of joy and sadness are over, what lies ahead? For many of us graduating, the next stage of experience is college. Others are joining the armed forces, while some will enter married life. Still others have jobs awaiting them. Hopefully, the education gleaned so far places each one of us at the stage of proficiency which can help us most to pass on to whatever higher level we seek to attain. The world out there is soon to challenge us to make our own mark in it, will not freely accommodate us and coddle us through life. We, as new full-fledged members of it, must expect to work to reach the stage of proficiency or prestige we wish to achieve. As we sit here together as a class for the last time, we have to consider all the opportunities ahead which may help us to ascend to our highest levels of experience and proficiency. The commencement exercises this evening signify our satisfactory completion of one stage and official approval to step boldly forward to answer the challenges of the next. With an attitude of confidence and energetic readiness, perhaps all of our lives may be a continuous graduation to our own personal success. Thank you. Dr. Piper, members of the school board, Dr. Taylor, Mr. Murray, Reverend Schleif, faculty, parents, and fellow members of the graduating class of 1986, good evening. Twelve years ago, you, our parents, enrolled us in this school system, and we're just as proud as you could be to see us, your youngsters, enter into the learning process. At times, we did not bring home the grades you thought we should. We became too wrapped up in extracurricular activities and busied ourselves with many things instead of scholastic efforts. But we thank you for the support you continually gave us and for that extra nudge to make us work just a little harder. We hope you are as proud of us tonight as you were when we began our education. The faculty accepted us into their classes and looked upon us as another group of students who would hopefully grasp what they had to teach us. Teachers, we hope that we have made your job just a little easier and we have gained as much knowledge from you as we could. You had the patience to help us and we did learn. For that, we thank you. For the class of 1986, we are the reason and basis for this evening's celebration. We are a group of close individuals brought together through the realities of society. We have learned together, become responsible together, shown concern together. When a member of our class needed our love and support, we stood strong. When asked to pray for her, we joined at a prayer vigil. As she recovered, our class rejoiced with her and her family. We, as a large group of people, held together as one to sponsor a dance for her and help her regain her health. This evening, we become a full body once more with Alicia, here to graduate with us, the people who love to be with In the coming months, we shall go our separate ways, but this, our senior year, has been a year filled with success for all of us. Our goal was set to graduate and tonight, that goal has become a reality. But we must not stop here. We must now set further goals, moving us toward a life possibly filled with successes, always being strengthened by our failures. 
To let graduation be our destiny is to wait all the way I've worked so hard to achieve. Goals for further successes must be set by all of us. We must willingly continue to work hard, maintaining the edge we have in society. The future awaits the eager, the hard worker, the self-believer. To have faith in oneself is to move in the direction of success. Classmates, only you can accomplish what your abilities lie to do. Never take a step backwards, but always move forward. The future will be nothing without us. We are the movers and builders of tomorrow. I wish you all the best of luck, and may God bless you. Thank you. give this presentation to Boone, I want to tell you a little story, so bear with me. It seems that in 1926, a young man named Ellis Bixler, probably still on a stage similar to this, on graduation day, made a presentation to Boone. In 1941, he and his wife moved into a house, who later become 641 North Cherry Street. In 1978, they decided to move out and sold the house to a Mr. Victor Thiel and family my dad. And now in 1986, 60 years later, doing the same thing he did. It's kind of, it's fine. Um, I guess it's been a practice to, in years past, to glorify or maybe even downgrade the class, you know, so you can show the success. I can think of uh, one glaring downfall of our class that happened. Last Friday in the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know I speak for all of you, and I would like to express my humble apologies. And also, a note of warning to any of you uh, underclassmen out there: it wasn't worth it. So, don't cry. <laughs> so if you're walking down the street one day and some guy walks up to you and says, "Hey man, you want to get a food right? Just say no, okay? <laughs> he may something. He may say something like, "Oh." for your parents to find out. All the cool kids do it. Just say no, okay? Thanks. I thought the and I present this soon on behalf of the class of 86 in the hope that the fire of Timothy in high school will burn in the hearts of every student in graduation. The challenge the seniors have given us in carrying on a tradition of leadership to be upon us, and we accept the challenge. And as junior class president, I say thank you and the best of luck and success in the future years. the commencement address this evening. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Reverend Ray Lynn Schleif, who is pastor of Epworth United Methodist Church. In three weeks, I celebrate my 10-year high school class reunion. So if you thought I was old and aged, you're wrong. I'm quite young. So I come before you this evening with a great pleasure and privilege to say that 10 years ago I sat where you're sitting and I challenge you at this moment to pause, look around, and know this is the last time it'll happen this way. These are your friends, your peers, the persons that you spent much time and also 
tomfoolery with in high school. So seize the moment, make it an indelible mark on your mind, and know that never again will all of you be gathered together in this place. And so enjoy it and celebrate. For I know that when I tur return back to Iowa in three weeks, and it's three weeks from this evening, some of my classmates will not be there. Some of them are going to choose not to come. Some of them are unable to come. And some of this at this point in their lives have already passed on and died. 10 years isn't a long time, but it's long enough to create great change in your lives. So seize this moment. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that in 10 years you're going to change more in your lives than you have within the past five. And you're thinking, good grief, five years ago I was about 13 years old. I couldn't even grow facial hair. And let's be honest, some of you can't today. <laughs> but you're going to change more in the next 10 than you have in the last five and probably more in the next 10 than you will 20 years thereafter. You're gonna take a job, some of you are gonna to go to college, some of you are gonna change jobs, some of you will be married, start families, get another job, turn to another career, and move a minimum of three times in the next 10 years. Three times, if not four or five. That's a lot of change. You're going to become different people than you are here this evening. Now, you don't have to do your whole life's living in the next five to ten years. Don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Enjoy what life has to offer. My parents had four daughters and decided to keep them from being married at the age of 18 or 19. They'd send us all to college. Two of my sisters were married right after college graduation. The other two of us haven't discovered we're old enough to be married yet. I don't know what the problem is, but what they said was, don't live your life in a hurry. Enjoy it. A lot of change in the next 10 years. And with change, not only comes excitement, but distress. So bend with the change, be resilient, enjoy it, and don't let it get you down. The final thought I share with you is my answer, my answer, may not be yours, but it's mine, to what is the meaning and purpose in life. Now, I'm not gonna get preachy on you, okay? But it's important. Each of us must struggle with that and ask ourselves, what is so significant about my being alive in this world? So I'm going to, in a very practical way, and not being preachy or wordy, try to answer that question. I believe the most important thing in life is not to have the attitude of, I'm going to get all I can out of life. And the most important thing in life is not to see how much you can acquire or who you can impress. The only person you have to impress is yourself. But the most important thing in life is asking ourselves, what do I have to give to life? Now I think this class has already begun to struggle and wrestle with that question. And I think Jody hit on it to a point also. For last fall, you experienced a tragedy in the life of Alicia and her parents. And suddenly you became aware that even though you're young and vivacious, you're not immortal. That life is sacred and life is precious and at any moment it can be swept away. Life is fragile. And during this past year, you stayed in touch with Alicia, 
you prayed for Alicia, you had fundraisers and benefits, and you even sang songs to her at Cabaret. And you began to wrestle and struggle with what's so important about life. Relationships. The community, along with each of you, rallied around the God's family. And you didn't do it for any personal gain. You didn't do it to say, what can I get out of this moment? But you did it because you cared and you loved, because you wanted to give of yourselves. And so the most important meaning of life is what do I have to give to other persons? And you've already started that. You've started the giving. So don't turn around and don't take the attitude that I'm going to get all I can out of life. But instead, turn around and say, I'm going to give all I have to life. And I'll guarantee that you'll get more than you ever bargained for if you have the attitude that you're going to give everything you have to life. And so in closing, I hope and pray that you go through life caring for and loving people as you cared for and loved your own classmates. That you not forget that lesson, but that you carry it on because you've learned something at a young age that many people don't learn for years. May the blessing of God be upon you and encourage you as you grow. pleasure to present to the Kenton City Board of Education the class of 1986. They have met or exceeded the minimum requirement that's set forth by the Ohio State Department of Education and the Kenton City Board of Education. As the principal of Kenton Senior High School, I recommend that they be accepted as candidates to receive their diplomas of graduation. Dr. Piper. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Parents, faculty, friends of the graduates, and special guests to graduating class in 1986. I congratulate you on reaching this important time in your life. The first 17 or 18 years of your life are over. You can't change that. I'm sure that during those 17 or 18 years, there's been a lot of happenings which you are very proud of. There probably have been other things which have happened or what you have done, which if you had the opportunity, you would change it. Again, you cannot change that. Hopefully, the experience you have had will help to guide and direct you as you plan for the future. And as you plan for the future, remember, no challenge is too big or too little. Self-satisfaction is what is important. Keep in mind, what is important to you may not be as important to others. Also, never forget that the learning process continues throughout your lifetime. Remember two other things. Whatever you elect to do with your lives, don't, do, don't forget to do it with dignity and maintain the respect of your family, the respect of your friends and relatives. I hope you nurture and enjoy every day of your lives. Once again, I'd like to congratulate you on your graduation. Thank you. Will the candidates of the class of 1986, please?
first person receiving their diploma, class of 1986, Paula Ann Barrier Albert. Sherry May Omwig. Tammy Sue Ansley. David Wayne Ashba. Gregory Bailey. Anthony Wayne Barker. Brian Edward Barlow. Mark Allen Barrett. Bradley James Bennett. Robin J. Beverly. John Franklin Banal. Stephen Wayne Bottle. Michelle Renee Breen. Mitchell Lee Brown. Ramona Gail Brown. Laura Lee Birchall. Donald Mac Broker. Tracy Renee Canode. Robert D. Carter. Brooke Elizabeth Carson. Beverly K. Castle. Scott Allen Christie. Amy Michelle Clapsaddle. Clayton Edward Clawson Jr. Timothy John Cole. Heather Renee Cornell. Holly Sue Cornell. Michael Eugene Colson. Rebecca Lynn Kozad. Sarah Lynn Kreider. Sherry Renee Crisp. Michael Ray Davis. Stephen C. Davis. Laura Elaine Dennis. Vicki Sue Dietz. Alicia Sue Dodds. Deanna Lynn Dodds. Craig Vernon Downey. Clifton Bernard Draper. Dana Allen Doolin. Darren Michael Dyer. Sean Shelton Emmons. James Michael English. Paul Joseph Irwin. Daryl Emerson Fay. Rodney J. Fink. Shelly Lynn Fleece. Clifford Vincent Gerber. Robert Eugene Halsey. Brian Harbison. David Charles Hare, Jr. Barbara Moore Harple. 
Leora Lynn Hartley. Mary Margaret Hatcher. David Leo Hossholder. Brett Lee Hader. Sharon Diane Heverly. Melinda K. Heilman. Tracy Jill Hicks. Beth Marie Hill. Mark Allen Holly. Mark Wesley Hauser. Michelle Marie Huss. Kathleen Suzanne Jones. Tina Annette Jones. Veronica Jane Kimberly. Wade Allen Kidd. Ronald Dean Kinnear. David A. Lafferty. Neil K. Lawrence. Beth Ann Lane. Lisa Marie Ledley. Timothy Wayne Leffler. Pamela Sue Leg. Crystal Lee Leitner. Karen Sue Leitner. Tammy Lynn Lawrence Leitner. Jane Marie Lotus. Joseph Eugene Long. Jeffrey Scott McLeod. Nicholas Winfield McCullough. Catherine Jean Mabry. Shelley K. Manns. Annette Rochelle Mendenhall. Linda Lou Mon. Scott Elliot Moore. Vicki Lynn Morrissey. Thomas Eugene Murphy, Jr. G. Lynn Newmeyer. Daryl Emerson Nichols, Jr. Amy Sue Oates. Jody Dwayne Oates. Nanette Renee Oldham. Daryl Allen Osborne. Jill Renee Osborne. Teresa L. Osborne. Chantel Lee Pack. Vicki Lee Palmer. Andrew David Perkins. Daniel Malone Phillips. Stacy Lee Piper. Todd Wayne Blogger. Brian Jean Plot. David Lee Quay. Nick Edwin Quay. Michael Patrick Quinn. Stephen L. Rader. Harry Joseph Rawl. Deborah Lynn Reese. 
David A. Reed. Micah Rittberg. Paul Eric Richards. Jennifer Elaine Ritchie. Jill Ann Roby. Marty Sue Roby. David Lee Rodenberger. Franklin Lee Ruth Jr. Sonia D. Havener Rudd. Sue Ellen Scarberry. Tammy Lynn St. Clair. Jacqueline Marie Searson. Anna Marie Seeley. Robert Wayne Sharp. Blake Eugene Shaw. Kimberly K. Scheller. Carrie Lynn May Shepherd. Krista K. Schick. Jody Lynn Sickles. James Murfield Skeens. David Eugene Smith. Scott David Steiner. Brenda Sue Strotter. Ellie A. Tanua. Laura Lee Taylor. Lisa K. Taylor. Stephen Lee Taylor. Todd Victor Thiel. Derek Richard Hillman. Ryan Lee Totten. Christina Rochelle Treen. Darlene Lynn Tucker. Laura Yvette Tudor. Monty Robert Vermillion. Bobby Lynn Wallace. Mary Jane Rogers Walls. Allison Ann Watkins. Christopher Scott Wetterts. Denise Diane Wetterts. James Patrick White. Sonia Lynette Whited. Paul Edward Wilkinson. Lori Ann Williamson. Michael Wayne Wendell. Bonnie Lynn Woodard. Angela Michelle Wyatt. And the last senior to go across the stage, Karen Rose Zoller. Would the graduates please rise? Since you have met all the requirements for graduation, received your diplomas, you are now graduates of Senior High School and you may move the tassel. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our most gracious God, we seek your blessing and guiding hand to be upon each of these young persons who have received this honor this evening. May you carry them forward into many miles and distant ways of living that are holy and gratifying unto you. 
and may you help them to always sense your directing in their lives. In the spirit of Christ, we thank you. Amen.